Hi guys and welcome back to machine learning with C++. In this section we're going to be looking at modeling a problem with linear regression which we briefly spoke about in the last section but so don't worry too much if you've completely forgotten what linear regression is this section is going to be completely devoted to describing it and going into a bit more detail about what it actually is. So in this section we're going to be looking at you know a brief overview of linear regression so slightly more detailed than mentioning it in the last section. We'll then also be implementing it with C++. We'll then also look at experimenting with the learning factor. Now don't worry too much about what that is just yet. That's going to become a lot clearer as well when we get to the section and as, as this section moves on. We'll also look at what if there's not a linear relationship. So linear regression relies on a linear relationship between two parameters an input and an output. However, if that's not the case, there are ways that we can generalize to nonlinear relationships. So a brief overview of linear regression, video 2.1. So what is linear regression? Essentially, it's just creating a line of best fit. So I'm sure at school, you know, you plotted um, height versus weight or something like that. And then you'd have to, with a ruler, draw a straight line so you then created a function between your input, which would be your height, and then you'd be able to predict the weight of that person. And effectively, that's what we're doing with linear regression. So how do we create the line of best fit? Well, obviously it's in the mathematical function ax plus b, where x is your input and a and b are your coefficients. And how we obtain the relationship is a similar way to how you would fit a line of best fit at school with a ruler you try and draw a line that is that minimizes the distance between the line and all the points so you, you fit a line that's closest to all the points and effectively that's what we do here now this we achieve the minimization but by something called least squares now it does look a bit mathematical but don't worry it's not that hard and it is quite intuitive when you think about it Effectively, what least squares does is instead of minimizing the distance between the line and every data point, it minimizes the square of the distance between the line and every data point. Now, this accounts for the fact this basically helps if the point is below, you don't get a negative value, which offsets with the point above. So here, as you can see on the second point, the error function, n is the amount of data points we have, and we are summing up over all of the data points. Now yi is the um, value of a data point. So this blue um, diamond here would, would have a value yi of three. And then we subtract that. So this distance here, this red line, we find this value on the blue line and we subtract yi from that, or well, actually in this case, we're subtracting the line from the point. So then what we do is we sum up the square. So we square these distances so they're non-negative. So that gives us our error term. So the error term is effectively the sum of the square of these distances. So hopefully, you know, that's all making a little bit of sense. You'll have to excuse the mouse on the presentation. So that's gives us a parameter or something we can optimize against. So we want to minimize the sum of the squares of the distances between the data values and the line. Now, how do we minimize this? Well, if you want to minimize a function going back to, you know, like first level calculus, you just differentiate it and find when it's zero. So we can differentiate this function, the error function with respect to the coefficients a and b. So then we obtain an expression for when the error is minimized, what value should this be? So we can set this to zero, and then we could actually, in theory, rearrange this and obtain an expression for a and b analytically. But we're not gonna do that. Instead, we're gonna do something called gradient descent because I'm sure you know you're all capable of doing simultaneous equations, whereas gradient descent allows you to, you know, when there's a non-analytical solution, you can find it computationally. So what is gradient descent? 
basically gradient descent is a way of finding the minimum of a function. So rather than, you know, trying to rearrange the equation and where it's zero, we'll start with an initial value, a in it. And then while it's not converged, we are going to compute the gradients for GA and GB at this current value of at the current value of A and B. We'll then compute a step size. Don't worry too much about that right now. Um, we will then update A, AN and BN. And what this update step is, we have our initial value where we were before. We then subtract the gradient times a multiplier value. Now, that might have been a bit overwhelming for you, but let's look over at this graph. So let's say our, our current value is here. So this is a parameter m that we're trying to optimize against. We're trying to find a value of m that minimizes this error term. m is just some arbitrary coefficient right now. So here, as you know, let's say we're, we've got a value of 10 and our m is minus 3. We would compute the gradient at this point. So the gradient is going to look something like that. We would then subtract a, um, a parameter, so an alpha. So let's just say it's half. So then we would subtract half of the value of the gradient at this point from our current value. And that would take us down to here. We would then do the same and the same until we minimize. So you basically start at a value. You find the direction. You find where the gradient the direction of steepest descent and then you just take a step down it it's a bit like walking down a hill and that's effectively what gradient descent is so i hope that was a very kind of you know whistle stop tour of linear regression but a quick overview for step one you need to compute the gradient of the error function and then that you know that gives you something to optimize against step two you then need to calculate the coefficients using gradient descent or analytically, if you're that way inclined. And then step three, you then need to run the algorithm to test the results. But yeah, so hopefully that's given you, you know, a brief intuition or more of an intuition about how linear regression works.